a very good day. We gather again virtually to celebrate and uh, mark the Wednesday, or our midweek service in the, uh, in the seventh week of, of Easter. And so we begin with our Easter responses. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Praise the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. He gave us new life and hope by raising Jesus from the dead. Rejoice then, even in your distress. We shall be counted worthy when Christ appears. God has claimed us as his own. He has called us from our darkness into the light of his day. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia, the Son of Righteousness is risen. O come, let us worship. Alleluia, Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast, not with the old leaven, the leaven of malice and evil, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Alleluia. Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all, but the life he lives, he lives to God. So also consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Jesus Christ our Lord. Alleluia. Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since by a man came death, by a man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ shall all be made alive. Alleluia. Alleluia, the Son of Righteousness is risen. O come, let us worship. We continue with a portion of the 68th Psalm. Send forth your strength, O God. Establish, O God, what you have wrought for us. Kings shall bring gifts to you for your temple's sake at Jerusalem. Rebuke the wild beast of the reeds and the peoples, a herd of wild bulls with its calves. Trample down those who lust after silver. Scatter the peoples that delight in war. Let tribute be brought out of Egypt. Let Ethiopia stretch out her hands to God. Sing to God, O kingdoms of the earth. Sing praises to the Lord. He rides in the heavens, the ancient heavens. He sends forth his voice, his mighty voice. Ascribe power to God. His majesty is over Israel. His strength is in the skies. How wonderful is God in his holy places. The God of Israel giving strength and power to his people. Blessed be God. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Keep watch over yourselves, and over all the flock of which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers, to shepherd the church of God that he obtained with the blood of his own son. I know that after I have gone, savage wolves will come in among you, not sparing the flock. Some, even from your own group, will come distorting the truth in order to entice the disciples to follow them. Therefore be alert, remembering that for three years I did not cease night or day to warn everyone with tears. And now I commend to God and to the message of God's grace. A message that is able to build you up and to give you the inheritance among all who are sanctified. I coveted no one's silver or gold or clothing. You know for yourselves that I worked with my own hands to support myself and my companions. In all this, I have given you an example that by such work we must support the weak, remembering the words of the Lord Jesus, for he himself said, It is more blessed to give than to receive. When he had finished speaking, he knelt down with them all and prayed. There was much weeping among them. They embraced Paul and kissed him, grieving especially because of what he had said and that they would not see him again. Then they brought him to the ship. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the Gospel according to St. John. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them, I protected them in your name that you have given me. I guarded them, and not one of them was lost except the one destined to be lost, 
so that the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I am coming to you, and I speak these things in the world so that they may have my joy made complete in themselves. I have given them your word, and your word has and, and the world has hated them, because they do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. I'm not asking you to take them out of the world, but I ask you to protect them from the evil one. They do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. As you have sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. And for their sakes I sanctify myself, so that they may also be sanctified in the truth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the words of my mouth, the meditations of all our hearts, be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. In the reading from the Acts of the Apostles this morning, um, we heard Paul speaking to the elders in the church of Ephesus. He was, he was on his way back to Jerusalem. He had been out on his missionary journeys and had stopped at Ephesus before, gone on, and was on his way back and decided to stop off at Ephesus and to really sort of check in on how the church was, was making out. And in his conversation with the elders, he warned them about wolves popping up. See, Paul had, had worked hard to establish the, the church. He'd, he'd worked hard to, to build folks up in the faith of Jesus Christ. He worked hard to proclaim the gospel. But he knew that the world was not all sunshine and roses. And he knew that there were those who would attempt to undermine that work. And to, and to undermine the, the continued life of the church. He knew there were threats out there. That the church was vulnerable. And so he told those elders in, in Ephesus, watch out for the wolves. Watch out for those who would persecute you. That, or those who would lead you down a different way. Watch out for those who would lead the flock into danger. There was a lot of, or there were, excuse me, a lot of threats to the church. There's all kinds of things that, that could cause problems in that early church. It was just on the edge. And because of that, it was an incredibly vulnerable group of people. These were people that were called to be sheep. They were called to follow Jesus, to follow their shepherd. That is what they were called to be. And so Paul said to them, watch out for the wolves. Because they will do what they can to stop that. To stop those folks from following Jesus Christ. Now, fast forward to 2021 in southwestern Ontario. And the kind of threats that the early church dealt with are not the kind of threats that we have to deal with. The threats of the early church were, were, were threats from the outside, really. And occasionally from someone who, who got on off on the wrong way within. In our world, we don't really deal with external wolves. In our world, we don't really deal with external threats. The threat, in, to, the threat we face in the, in the life of the church is actually becoming wolves ourselves. It's transforming ourselves from, from sheep that follow the good shepherd into wolves that don't fall, wolves that fight and, and, and push and, and push back and all the rest. And this is something that I've, I've seen again and again and again. And, and where I have seen it is when people in the church feel threatened or feel vulnerable. And the, the temptation is to get rid of the threat or get rid of the vulnerability. The temptation is to transform into a wolf and fight back, eliminate the threat, get rid of it. And I've seen this crop up in a, in a number of contexts. 
I've seen it crop up amongst a majority within the church who feel that they don't need to make room, make space, make allowances, make, um, make opportunities for others to be part of the life of the church. I've seen it happen when we have embarked on efforts to make sure that our indigenous brothers and sisters can participate fully, or people from other ethnic backgrounds throughout the world are unable to, to participate and be part of the life of the church. I've seen people react badly to that. Say, why do we need to bother? Why can't they just accommodate the way we do things? Why can't they do whatever? I've seen it happen with respect to women. When we have, as a church, made effort or made, made uh, changes, made room for women to fully engage in the ministry that God's called them to and fully use all the, their God-given gifts and talents. I've seen especially men push back against that, saying it ain't right, it's not the way it should be. I've also seen women do it in the context of saying, I don't think I really wanna have a, a, someone in a leadership position that's a woman. I've seen it in relation to, to homosexuality. When the church has, has made room for folks of, of different genders, different sexualities, when the church has, has, has attempted to, to incorporate and, and love those folks and allow them to participate fully in the life of the church, there has been and there still is a great deal of pushback. And it doesn't generally come down to, to, to fists and, to, and, and physical violence. What generally comes down to is complaints, whining, weeping and gnashing of teeth, if you will. Or it comes down to just passive-aggressive resistance. At the end of the day, as, as Christians, we are called to be sheep, not wolves. We're called not to, to fight it out, but to follow Jesus Christ, to follow Christ's teaching and love and all the rest. But we feel like that might fall apart. We feel like those threats may, may remove something from us or take something away from us or, or, or make us vulnerable or knock us off. And so we worry. And that's when we get tempted to become a wolf, to fight back, to push back, to, to stop whatever it is that's making us feel out of sorts. But that's not what we're called to be. And that's not what Paul was calling those Ephesians to be either. He was calling them to stay faithful, to, to stay the path, to, to, to follow Jesus Christ. And the reason that they could do that, even though there were all those wolves out there trying to get them, the reason that they could stay faithful and just keep following was because the wolves weren't the only thing out there. With them, they had the Good Shepherd. With them, they had Jesus Christ. With them, they had the one who had died and risen and ascended. Jesus was with them. Jesus, the Good Shepherd, was with them. And Jesus could protect them from any wolf. They had nothing to worry about because Jesus was their Good Shepherd. They were not a flock all along the wilderness surrounded by wolves. They were a flock with a good shepherd who would defend them and protect them and care for them and love them and support them and enable them to live. That shepherd would give up his life for his sheep. In the church, we feel threats. We feel vulnerable. And 
part of that just comes from the reality that things change. And we're not always comfortable with that. But we never have to worry about being wiped out. We never have to worry about things going awry. We never have to worry about losing it all. Because we're not alone. The Good Shepherd is with us always. We need to, to stop worrying. Stop with being tied up and feeling vulnerable and threatened and all the rest. We need to just stop all that. Jesus is with us. And he will protect us. And he will care for us. And he will love us. He will make sure that we go the right way, that we end up in the right place. We have nothing to fear, nothing to worry about. We make all the changes in the world and Jesus will make sure that they're the right ones. We can trust him. He managed to get the church 2,000 years down the road. We can trust that our Lord will enable us to live and grow and build and develop, to, that, that, that he will get us from where we are to the kingdom. We can trust that. We don't need to worry. And so we can make room for our indigenous brothers and sisters. We can make room for our black and, 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 and brothers and sisters of color. We can, we can make room for women. We can ensure that, that those that don't have enough have enough. We can do all of that and not worry one bit because Jesus is with us. Our good shepherd will lead us always. Our good shepherd will protect us always. Our good shepherd will love us always. We have nothing to worry about. And for that, we can all say thanks be to God. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first and the great commandment, and the second is like it. Love your neighbors yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. Let us pray. Let us pray for the church. Let us pray for Todd, our bishop, for our brothers and sisters throughout the world, for our St. Mark's family. Let us pray that we would all remember that we are not a flock alone in the wilderness, we are a flock with a good shepherd who loves us and will protect us and lead us to the green pastures and the still waters. Let us pray for the leaders of the nations. Let us pray that they would strive always for justice and peace, that they would seek ways to include, that they would build their, their nations and their communities and their individual members up. Let us pray for our world. Let's pray for an end to war and violence, hatred and discrimination, bigotry. Let us pray for an end to the pandemic. Let us pray for an end to the violence in the Middle East. Let us pray that the Holy Spirit would sweep through this world and change hearts and change minds so that we could come to live out those two great commandments. Let us pray for this community, for St. Clair Beach, Tecumseh, for Windsor and all of Essex County. Let us pray 
for ourselves and our neighbors, that we would live together in peace, that we would support one another and care for one another, that we would be courageous in love. Let us pray, especially for those who work on our behalf and enable us to live. Let us pray that God would watch over each and every one of them and keep them safe and healthy in all they do. Let us pray for those who are in need of our prayers, for the sick, the suffering, the lonely, the depressed, the mentally ill, and the addicted. Let us pray that God's healing grace would touch the lives of all those who are on our hearts at this time. Let us pray for those who have died. And let us pray for those who mourn. Let us pray that the good news of the resurrection good news of our good shepherd would give comfort and peace to those who are bereaved. Finally, let us pray for ourselves. Let us pray that we would be open to the leading of the good shepherd and that our worries, our concerns would evaporate in the face of his love, in the face of his grace, in the face of his abiding direction and guidance. We pray all this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. May the God of peace enable us to do his will in every kind of goodness, working in us what pleases him, through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever and ever. Before we wrap things up, I want to, again, and as usual, thank you for your prayers, for your support, for your faithfulness through this whole pandemic time. And, uh, I, uh, I, I just ask that you continue to pray for the church, for the world, for an end to the pandemic and all the rest. Um, through the, uh, the month of May, we are really sort of hoping that folks would consider um, making a donation to, to Huron Church Camp. And, uh, it looks like camp may be, uh, may be on, so that's, uh, that's some exciting news. And uh, you know, we, have one, we have folks that, that attend as campers, we have folks that, uh, that go as leaders, and we have folks that, uh, that are, we'll call them camp alumni, folks who went to camp through the years and had their faith um, developed and, and, and grown in that place. It is a wonderful ministry, and I hope that, uh, that you will be part of supporting that. The, uh, and the last thing I want to say is this. Stay home when you can, please. Stay safe when you go out, please. And please stay in touch with each other. It's a, a great way for us to, to share the presence of Christ and, and share Christ's love and grace with one another. The peace of God which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you this day and remain with you forevermore.